Hi, we're taking a look at the three types of compounds. We've looked at alloys, so now we'll look at ionic compounds, or a nickname for ionic compounds is salts. And so you can imagine that table salt fits into this category. I made a note on this side of the board. I wrote that ionic compounds are metal, nonmetal combinations. So what we're doing is taking something from the left side of the periodic table, a metal, and mixing it with something on the right side of the periodic table, a nonmetal. Now, to be ionic means that you have a charge on it. And so we're talking about sodium, not the element, but sodium plus. This is sodium the metal, sodium the element, which has lost one electron to become positively charged. Positive charge results because sodium has lost a negative charge. Now you have one additional proton than electron. So this is called sodium ion, meaning it's sodium with a charge on it. And we can simply combine that with chlorine, which has gained an electron. Cl, the element, has gained an electron to become negatively charged. Electrons are negatively charged. Now it's no longer chlorine. We go ahead and say, let's change the ending of our metal, nonmetals to IDE, so we have the chloride ion here. And people know this as table salt or sodium chloride. The formula for this is simply written as NaCl. We leave the charges out. The charges have to cancel. So we get one plus, one minus, charges wash, and we end up with NaCl sodium chloride. A very simple ionic compound. Now let's do something a little bit more challenging. Let's take a look at a group two metal such as calcium. Calcium is not going to take on a plus one charge. Calcium is going to take on a charge of plus two. So we have ourselves calcium, calcium two plus, and let's use fluoride, F minus. I'm going to put an F minus right here. Calcium fluoride. That strange spelling with fluorine and fluoride, UO rather than OU, calcium fluoride. Now something's wrong with this. The charges don't cancel. The calcium is two plus, fluoride is minus one. Hmm, let's review. Over here, the inert or noble gases don't take on charges regularly. These go minus one. These nonmetals in group 17 tend to gain one electron. So chloride gains one. Fluoride has fluorine with an extra electron. So the cancellation doesn't happen because the charges are plus two and minus one. What needs to happen is calcium needs to give one electron to this fluorine to become fluoride, and we need another one. So we need a second fluoride here, so we see our charges cancel. This is calcium fluoride, and this is the only formula that there is for calcium fluoride. No such thing as CAF, it doesn't exist. We write our formula as CAF2, one calcium, two fluorides. Nice. Let me go ahead and give a little bit more board space. And we'll do something a little bit more sophisticated. Let's take a look at aluminum sulfide. Aluminum sulfide. Because of its position in the periodic table, aluminum ion is going to be aluminum 3 plus. Let me show you with a pointer how I get that. On the periodic table of the elements, the metals go plus one, they lose one electron, plus two, they lose two. Well, if you take a look at sodium, element 11, magnesium 12, and make a big jump over to aluminum 13, it's gonna be plus one, plus two. We'll skip the transition metals for a moment, and aluminum sneaks in at plus three. Now, sulfide is sulfur that has obtained a couple of electrons. We give our nonmetals the IDE ending, so we have here, Aluminum and sulfur ions. Aluminum three plus. And what charge do you have for the sulfide? I have it as two minus. Now this is unfortunate because we cannot simply take one of these and two of these or one of these and two of these because we have a three plus charge and a two minus charge. So the lowest common denominator of three and two is six. So in order to make this work, we're going to need two of the aluminum three plus ions, and we're going to need three sulfides. Now our charges are plus six and minus six, they all cancel. We've needed two aluminum ions and three sulfide ions. So the formula is written as Al2S3. We have metal-nonmetal combinations. 
We can also include something called the polyatomic ions. Let me make a short list of some polyatomics for right now. Polyatomic ions. There are many, hundreds, thousands of polyatomic ions. We're going to be looking at anywhere from about five to nine polyatomic ions regularly. A polyatomic is many, poly for many, many atoms that have taken on a charge. One of the simplest ones is NO3 minus, and we refer to it as nitrate. Now its official name should be nitrate ion because it has a charge on it. I'm going to put it in brackets here. The chemist usually just says nitrate. Hand me a bottle of sodium nitrate. Oh, we've got nitrate present. And it's assumed that nitrate has a charge on it. It's an ion. Now, we're not sure yet why these four atoms, one nitrogen and three oxygens, have gotten together and taken an electron from somewhere else, but it does. And we mine this stuff. We can dig and find nitrates. We use them as fertilizers in soils, things like this. Nitrate. Here's another common one. CO3 with a 2 minus charge is carbonate. And carbonates are in your blood, and they're regulating the pH. They're in food products, they're in laundry soaps, they're all over the place. Here's one that used to be in laundry soaps, and we've tried to rid of it. Phosphate. Phosphates would mess up ecosystems. They wouldn't be very soluble, and so you'd get this white froth, white foam in small waterways, and so they tried to get rid of phosphates and laundry detergents and soaps and have moved to carbonates and other things. Hydroxide. Hydroxide, OH minus is a polyatomic. I've always been under the impression that hydroxide is misnamed because we use the IDE ending, and it would be nice if that was exclusively used for a single atom, like chloride or fluoride, but we use it here. I should also refer to it as hydroxide Ion, so I'll write ion. And our last one is actually a positively charged polyatomic ion. It's NH4. These five ions got together and have lost an electron, NH4 plus. We call it ammonium. Ammonium ion. These operate the same way as, how should I put it, a metal with a positive charge and nonmetals with negative charges. And we can make combination of, of these things with each other and with metals and nonmetals. I'll show you. Let's try and do barium nitrate. Now, barium is found on the periodic table of the elements. It's an element. It's Ba. It's in group number two. In ionic compounds, it will have lost two electrons and be the barium two plus ion. Nitrate is one that we've become familiar with. It's a polyatomic ion. Well, it's not a one-to-one -one combination. We need one barium and how many nitrates? We need a second one. Let me put a circle around that one and add another nitrate. Now the charge is offset. We have two plus and two minus. So the formula for barium nitrate is one barium. And we need to tell people that we have two nitrates. We're not allowed to break up these NO3 units. Those are nitrates. So we put these brackets around in number two. Let me give you an example of two involving transition metals. Copper is a transition metal. Take a look at the periodic table of the elements towards the middle right, and it's element number 29. Now that means that it is not going to be a metal that's always stuck on the same charge. It's transitional. So what we have to do is tell people barium is always 2 plus. Copper is not always, and it turns out one of them is 2 plus, might also be 1 plus. So I'm going to make a note here that we can have some copper chloride. And I left a little bit of space between copper and chloride. And this is a copper chloride. This blue one here is copper chloride. It says so. It's copper chloride. I have another one, and it's copper chloride, and it's green. These are two different substances. They have different densities. They have different physical properties. And they have different colors. Both of them are copper chloride. The uh, top one here was the one that I held up first. No difference, really. It's the blue one. And its formula on the bottle says it's CuCl2. The green one is CuCl. 
according to these formula, this copper needs to be plus one, and this copper needs to be plus two. I'll show you why in a moment, but you see if you can figure it out. On the bottom, this copper needs to be plus one because it's hooked up with one chloride, and chloride's minus one, so that's copper plus one. I can write plus, I can write one plus, I can write, what, plus one, it doesn't matter. On the top one, the copper needs to be two plus, and I can write two plus or plus two, it doesn't matter. And that's because it's hooked up with a couple of chlorides. The formula says, oh look, there's two negative charges, which means that the copper has to be two plus. So the copper chloride on the top, the copper has a charge of two plus. We need to tell people that, and we denote that by using Roman numeral two. So the Roman numeral two after copper says, copper has a two plus charge, and then there's chlorides. What are you gonna do for this copper right there? That's right, got it.